Hey everyone, welcome back. So today in this episode, we're going to talk about data cleaning. It's going to be another book review in collaboration with Pat Publisher. When I get to read this title, it just really resonates with me. Data cleaning and exploration with machine learning. So right off the bat, who are the contributors? So the author of this book is Michael Walker. And he has been in the industry for 30 plus years of experience, right? So right off the bat, let me just say this. That's something valuable. If you're gonna read a book and you're gonna look at the author experience, that number plays a lot of weight to the contributor of this book. And he's currently the CIO of College Ampang in Providence, Rhode Island. So with that being said, let's get the video started. Oh, by the way, it's coffee time. So today we're having Chinese tea. Tastes great. So the first thing I want to say about this book is how much statistical background that I dive in. For me personally, it really resonates with me because I did a few years of PhD in statistics and the statistical training really allowed me to be able to enjoy and appreciate some of the machine learning concept from statistical background. So when I first read a title, Data Cleaning, I thought it was going to focus heavily on how to use your library to come up with fancy and engineering way to get rid of the missing value, dropping columns, and so on and so forth. But after reading this book, that's of course too simple, sometimes naive. So what this book is able to provide you is really the connection between statistical learning and using statistical analysis to understand what data is useful, what data is noisy, and then it's using that information as a guideline to help you clean up your data, build up the feature such that it's predictive to the target. So on a high level, it's really interesting for me to read through this book. It's kind of like reading a journal from my graduate life, right? So. You look at the first couple of chapters, we're talking about summary statistics, expectation, standard deviation, and then we're talking about extreme value identification, what are the distributions, and so on and so forth. And one thing I like about this book is that it really provides the thorough detail of what could happen and what could go wrong in a supervised learning setup. So under the field of supervised learning, we're talking about features and we're talking about target. The features need to do something and then it has certain relationship exist in nature that help us explain the target variable. The target variable in a statistical learning sense, people also call it the dependent variable. So with that being said, that's the setup, that's the universe that we're living in. And now the question is simple. You have your features, why don't we use what we know and do what we do to establish this function such that we can use the features, use the function, which is your model, to make some sort of educated guess of that target variable with as little error as you possibly can, right? So this is where the conventional statistical learning can come into the equation and really help you enjoy and appreciate some of the machine learning topics, which is what this book is emphasizing on. For example, you look at machine learning, there's always gonna be a loss function, right? In your network, there's a loss function. What is the most common loss function? Mean square error. That's great, let's talk about that. What does that thing come from? Well, if you look at the linear regression and you look at the residual sum of square, that's exactly where the source come from, right? A mean square error can't just fall from the sky, it needs to come from somewhere. Where does the philosophy exist? What is the assumption going in there? It's coming from residual sum of square or RSS. So if you look at the conventional statistical learning with ODLS assumption, ordinary least square, that's the last function that we're looking at. So it's really interesting to me how this author is breaking to the grounds of data cleaning and data processing by using statistics as a building block. Another example is famous in machine learning, specifically when you build a neural network that 
you are using to make some sort of a classification problem. What is the loss function there? Well, you can use cross entropy. What is cross entropy? Where does it come from? It's coming from the likelihood function, right? And the likelihood function is extremely important in statistical inference if we want to come up with some sort of likelihood estimates. So that's where the idea comes from. And guess what? If you're going to process your data to achieve optimal error rate, which is your loss function, your mean square error, your cross entropy, how are you going to do it? You can't just randomly feeding data and you're like, fingers crossed, I'm just going to hope that this model works, right? No. What this author is doing is it dive into the statistical background and show you what this distribution function is for each of these variables, what is the outliers, what is the extreme value, and then it's taken from there. If it's outlier, let's talk about what are the methods to take care of that. If it's a noisy feature, let's talk about what are the methods to drop those noisy features. If it's important, let's talk about how to save them and how to identify these important features. And on top of that, this thing is probably a little bit difficult to absorb. Sometimes two or three features could work together as an interactive effect. So this interactions that we're talking about, how to detect that, right? All of these things require solid statistical foundation to help you understand what that data look like, how to get the information out of the data. And I really appreciate that this book is able to bring that on the table and give you the setup, give you the GitHub, give you the code to help you execute these ideas. And then in addition, not just from a statistical background, but the author is also able to take it all the way home and land on machine learning and how to use machine learning to do data processing, which end of the day, it's really what we want because when you build a machine learning model, you achieve some sort of optimal performance that you want. It is the data that's affecting your final performance. Well, then why don't you just use machine learning to take care of that data? So later on in chapters five, six, and seven, that's what the author is really trying to focus on, which is to use machine learning to select the features, to build the optimal data structure such that it can achieve the optimal performance. So we're talking about cardinalities of the features. We're talking about curves of dimensionality. We're talking about k-means. And how do you group features together? So all these things play together and they form a list of building blocks that you could play around with in your machine learning pipeline to achieve the high performance that you desire. And then in the end, I just wanna say that what this author is also talking about later on in the chapters is to provide a little bit of explainability. So it's talking about different performance measure metrics what are the assumptions? If there is an unbalanced data, which one's better, which one's worse? So this book is able to check all those boxes and go inside of the assumption of all these performance measure metrics so that you're not just downloading some library and then throw your prediction in there and throw your ground truth in there and fingers crossed and say, hey, let's just go with it, right? You're really able to check the assumption and see if the data that you are using falls under those assumptions. So this part is going to be extremely important because if you just quote the library and you have some sort of measure, some sort of preliminary results, if it's good, if it's bad, how am I supposed to know that's robust results, right? So if the assumptions fail and you happen to get good results, well, that deserves some secondary exploration, right? It doesn't mean that your model is good, doesn't mean the job is done which is why I really appreciate the last couple of chapters of this book that's able to take it all the way home and give us that intuition, give us that insight of how the assumption works in these functions. So with that being said, hope you enjoyed this video. Give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.